Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? I am bringing to you my 4th of July day tier tray DIYs. Oh my goodness, I have to tell you, I love doing these tiered tray DIYs, but this one I think might be my all time favorite. And I know I say that every time, but boy oh boy, I love how rustic this turned out. I love the Americana feel that it has. And what I love about it is that it could be used for more than one holiday. It could be used for 4th of July. It could be used for Memorial Day. If you have that Americana style going on, decor style, you could keep this up year round whenever you wanted to. I love the outcome of this. I did incorporate some new DIYs, especially for this themed tray. And that's something that I'm trying to do with each of the trays is incorporate some original DIYs. So that way you have something to look forward to and it's not the same old items on every tray. Although there are some repeat items, ones that I absolutely love, like those books in the birdhouse. Can't help it, I love those. You can almost guarantee that each DIY tray that I bring to you will have new DIYs incorporated into it. And that really is my goal. The next tiered tray DIY that I'm gonna be bringing to you is a farmhouse one. And this is one that you can keep up all year round when there's no holidays and you just want a really nice tiered tray to go on your tray, any of your trays. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it. And let me show you, I wanna say there's close to 25 DIYs. And like I said, some of them are repeat and some of them not, but you pick which ones you wanna to add to your tray. There's a variety. Let's get to it. Before I jump into all these DIYs, I'm gonna dive right into the embellishment pack that I will be using for today's tier tray DIY. This is the 4th of July or Americana I guess embellishment pack that Linda and I came up with for this tray. It is available for digital download, which is instant download PNG for $2.50, or you can have her cut and send them to you with free shipping for $5. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store in the description box below. The colors that I'll be using for today's tier tray is this Crimson Red by Waverly. This is a chalk paint. This is a bottle that I purchased online along with this blue ocean. Now you know I need to rustic these up a bit and to do that I'm gonna use some of this Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Brown. It's perfect to do that. And for the white, I'm not using white. I'm going with the cream because this is rustic and cashew is perfect for that. I'll also be incorporating some of Waverly's Antique Wax. Can you tell? This is a new bottle I got online as well. When doing these trays, and I know I have a lot of pieces that I need to paint, I like to do a batch of a color. So that way I don't run out of that color and find myself needing to go back and remix it. These crayon containers, Michaels carries them in this size and a smaller size. They are perfect for just that. So I'm gonna start off with the crimson red. And of course, this is too bright. And so to rustic it up, if you buy some of Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber and you just kind of add it to the red, you don't want to go too heavy handed with the brown at first. You kind of want to start off with a little, mix it and keep adding the brown until you achieve the dark muted rustic color that you're going for. So real quick, I just wanted to show you all the difference in paint color from what it was before to the rustic red that it is now by adding the brown. Moving on, I'm gonna do the same thing with the crimson blue, and as I'm pouring it, I can tell that I clearly did not shake the bottle good enough, but that's okay. No biggie, we'll just stir it up and it'll be a darker pigmented blue, hopefully. We'll go with it. So again, I'm just gonna add the brown paint, and I'm gonna do it little by little until I achieve the muted blue that I'm going for. Now that we've got the embellishments and the paint mixing out of the way, what do I have in store for you for the first and second DIYs? I'm gonna say it's safe to say that these wall decor pieces at the Dollar Tree are pretty new. Loving these, they came in red and blue. 
For this DIY, we're gonna get two for the price of one because we're gonna disassemble this piece. And I really wanted the words to stand out a bit, so I'm gonna take some cream cardstock because I'm going with cream because we're going with rustic. If you wanna go with white, go with white. Go with whatever color you want. I'm gonna cut a strip that's just big enough to fit on the back of this, and I'm just gonna hot glue it right on there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. No need for any other glue, just this. It's gonna stick. And because I want this to be rustic, I'm gonna go ahead and add a twine bow to the top. And I also am not showing, but I did put two Jenga blocks on the back of this because I wanted it to stand up. Not sure where that footage went, but you see it's standing up and that's because of the Jenga blocks. For the bottom half, the truck is a bit on the red-orange side. You may not be seeing it yet, but when you put my rustic red next to it, it looks a bit orange. I put one coat of my red over it. It still needs a second. I kept the highlighted areas that were originally there and just kind of went in and filled some pieces in, filled the blue of the flag in and the stripes. Then taking some of these cool wood stars that you can find at Michael's by Createology. You're getting 130 in this pack. I love these. I'm gonna be incorporating these into this DIY and just by painting it cream and adding some stitching, I thought just adding one to this flag was perfect. Here we are on DIY number three. And for this one, I'll be using these mini hats that come in a five pack from Dollar Tree. These obviously are for 4th of July, but I love that there's five of them because we can use them in other tier trays, seasonal tier trays. For this one, I went ahead and I removed the paper off of it and gave it a good coating of my blue paint. Huge difference, huh? And of course, I'm gonna incorporate some burlap to the top here. If you wanna incorporate any other ribbon, go for it. I just gotta incorporate burlap because this is, did I say rustic? It is. And I bet you didn't think I was gonna add stitching to these DIYs. I am. And so to this one, I'm using some of the cashew paint to add stitching. And because I have 130 of these wood stars, I decided to paint one red, add some of the cashew stitching to it, and just put it here on the front of the hat. As I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, this is still missing something. What is it missing? I think I needed to add some stitching to the burlap, and so I went in with the red and added that. Now I'm happy. DIY number four. What do I have in store for you for this one? I'll be using some of these Woodcraft Cubes by Crafter Square. What am I gonna do with these? Oh my goodness, this is so quick and easy and the outcome is, can I say it, so stinking cute. I'm gonna stack four of them by gluing them together with some of Aileen's glue. Then I'm gonna stack three, then two. I'm making two of this DIY, so if you wanna make two with me, this is what you should be left with. I gave these a couple coats of some fun paint, just kind of making them different. And again, because I have two sets, I made both sets the same. I'm gonna take some twine and I'm gonna tie a double knot in the twine. At the base of the knot, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. Once I cut it off, I'm gonna place some hot glue at the base of the knot and I'm gonna place this twine knot here at the top of these firecrackers. How cute is that? And to these firecrackers, I'm gonna add some of the stars that come in the embellishment pack. If you wanna hand paint them on, I say go for it. I wasn't feeling super artistic with a paintbrush today, and so I figured I'd go the safe route and just add the embellishments. And there we just made a cute set of mini firecrackers. Look at that, we're nine minutes in and we're on DIY number five. For this one, we're gonna make this wood toy car that is by Crafter Square that you can find on the crafting aisle, but I will say from time to time you can find them on the toy aisle. I'm gonna make this an American race car. How fun is that? And so I'm gonna give it a good base coat of the red. I didn't much wanna go with a black paint for the wheels because again, what is this tray? It's rustic. And so I decided to go in with some of the antique wax and I was loving the way it looked on the wheels. And to this, we made up a number four for the number of the car for, hence, 4th of July. How fun is that? And I did go in and add some stitching as well. And for the little head on the top for the race car driver, I did go with some cashew, and I thought that it would be cute to add stars as the rim of the wheels. How fun is that? Now, I will tell you, 
Here is an example of my Cricut not being calibrated very well. You can see that the stars didn't cut out perfectly. And for some reason, I'm really having trouble with Cricut Design Space and calibrating my Cricut. The only way you can calibrate it right now is on your iPad, but when I'm calibrating it, not all my cuts are coming out even. And so I'm not sure what's going on, but this is an example of that. And so when your cuts aren't perfect, know that you gotta recalibrate your Cricut. And I might have to do a hard reset on my Cricut Explore Air, which I haven't done yet. But yeah, when your cuts don't come out good, it's because it needs to be, guess what, calibrated. I didn't want to throw these away, so I used them. How cute did this little race car turn out? I love it. Look at here. We are on DIY number six. What do I have in store for you for this one? Using these wood stars, aren't these perfect? Dollar Tree carries these year round. So you can get it even outside of the 4th of July. So with this, I decided I was gonna make it a flag. And so to do that, I wanted to start off with a base coat of the cashew. For the blue part of the flag, I'm just gonna go in and freehand this blue section here, just making it two of the points of the star, as you can see that I'm doing here. Nothing fancy, this is rustic, so it doesn't need to be perfect. If you want it to be perfect, I would definitely use a ruler. And after that, I decided for the stripes, I better use a ruler because I knew I couldn't get the stripes to be even, but I'm just going to eyeball the width between the stripes and get as many stripes on the bottom part of this as I can. And because I already did the base cashew, I just need to go in with my red paint and fill in the red stripes. Again, I'm not looking for perfection. This is rustic, this is old, so any imperfections are gonna give it character. And of course, I'm gonna dive back into that cool embellishment pack for this tray. I'm gonna add some stars to the blue, and I thought it'd be fun just to add something a bit different and add this embellishment that says land that I love. I love this one. DIY number seven is a Kelly Barlow Creations original. What am I making out of popsicle sticks? A picnic bench. You can see how I put it together here. With the cross pieces, these are gonna be the legs to the table. And so just using a ton of hot glue, I'm gonna put a nice glob of it there and I'm gonna set the leg right up against it just as you see me doing here. Once that hot glue dries and hardens, these legs are gonna stay in place, I promise. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. You can see the healthy amount of hot glue that I'm using. Just do it, it'll work and it's not gonna show. If you've got a better way of doing it, I say do it, but this is the design I came up with, so it's gonna work. To get the bench part, I guess, of the table, you can't even see what I'm doing here. Oh, now you can. I'm gonna cut just a couple of small pieces of popsicle stick and I'm gonna glue it to the legs just like you see here. Mm-hmm, wait for it because now it's gonna get easy. Then I'm gonna place some glue right along this top edge just like so. Then taking this piece here, it's gonna go right on top, giving us half of a picnic bench. But we're gonna have a full picnic bench because we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. You can see that I gave this a good coating of some of Waverly's antique wax because it's a picnic bench. We need to make it look brown, woodsy, rustic. And so I'm gonna go ahead and paint on a tablecloth. Why am I painting on a tablecloth and not just using fabric? Because I couldn't find a rustic red fabric in my stash that I was happy with that matched. If you can find one, I say do it. It's gonna give it more texture, add some character, but since I don't have it, I'm gonna make do with what I have and I'm just gonna paint one on. Now, I don't want this to look like just a red diamond or part diamond that I added to this table, and so guess what I'm adding? Some stitching, because why not? I think it's gonna add something to it. No, it does add something. I don't think, I know. I love the way stitching looks, don't you? Since I had a bunch of these little jars left over from my lemonade stand, I figured this would be the perfect size to make kind of a flower pot to go on top of our picnic bench. So of course, I'm gonna give it a nice coat of the cashew. I'm gonna add some twine to the neck just to kind of cover up what we got going on here. And yep. I'm not gonna forget the stitching on this either. 
these are the perfect size flowers to add to this flower pot and so I'm just gonna add some hot glue around the top edge of I guess the little pot place these flowers in there and they're gonna stay and I'm gonna glue this flower pot to the top of my picnic bench how stinking cute is that it's so easy to do I love this oh yeah and I'm gonna finish it off with a twine bow and there you have it we are moving on we're on number eight Dollar Tree always has these LED stars and so I thought that these would be quick and easy and such a fun addition because they light up. We need a lighting element, right? And this blue just doesn't work for me so why not slap on some paint? Because why not? I'm going to do one star blue and one star red. Moving right along, we're on DIY number nine at the 16 minute mark. What do I have in store for you? These wooden rolling pins, I picked these up a couple of months ago on Amazon. I want to say I got a 15 pack for under $10. You can find the link to these in the description box below in my Amazon store. I just thought these were too stinking cute to pass up and what a fun addition. Now again, this is an option. If this isn't something you want to incorporate, you don't have to, but the fact that I got a 15 pack for under $10, I thought that it'd be such a fun addition. And such a versatile piece too. We could add them to every tray and it's gonna look just as cute. And so with this, I'm gonna start off with a base coat of cashew in the center. I'm gonna go in with the second coat of cashew after the first one dries, that is. And while this second coat is wet, I'm gonna add some red to this. And I'm just gonna kinda dry brush stroke on that red, blending it in with the cashew, kinda giving it that blurred, clouded look. Now I know that when I add this red to the cashew, it is going to kind of give it a pinkish undertone, but that's okay because I'm going to take and make the handles red. And when I do that, it's all going to just kind of tie in together and you're going to lose the pink in the center anyway. It felt too plain, so I did go in with the blue and added a blue solid line with some stitching and one of my twine bows. Oh my word, we're already on 10. We are cranking these DIYs out today. We've all seen these palettes at the Dollar Tree. Because the wood on each end of this palette is not proportionate with the planks that are in the center, I wanted to cut them in half. So just by taking a ruler and my pencil and drawing a line down the center, it's gonna give me the illusion of two additional planks. Why do I want that? Because I'm making a rustic flag out of this palette. How cool is that? Palettes are rustic, they're very in, and so what a fun piece to add. So by alternating my red and my cashew, I'm gonna add the stripes to my flag. And again, for the blue section of the flag, I'm just gonna freehand it. I'm not looking for perfection. This isn't anything super fancy. Freehanding it's gonna give it more of a rustic feel and give it that homemade, handmade look that we're looking for for this. And instead of putting stars, I wanted to put this heart embellishment. It's kind of a faded glory type heart that I absolutely love. It's got the stars in it, and I thought this was perfect for this. What a fun, quick, easy piece, isn't that? Look at what we're on now, DIY 11. What do I have in store for you for this one? A simple candle from the Dollar Tree. This is an apple cinnamon one. I love the color, it was perfect, so just to add to it, I'm gonna add some twine to the neck of it. Finish it off with, guess what? A twine bow. I bet you didn't see that coming. And this cute little USA embellishment. Look at how easy that is. We're not lighting this candle, so don't worry about it, people. It's just for decoration. Wowzers, we're on number 12. For this DIY, I'm gonna be using these mini mason jars that come in a two pack by Cooking Essentials. Just a bit of advice, when you see cute little mason jars like this at the Dollar Tree, you gotta snatch them up because you gotta get the getting while the getting is good, right? And these are too cute to pass up. So when I see them, I pick up maybe three or four packs, which is giving me eight of them, which is perfect for our tier trays. I'm gonna give this a quick coat of guess what color this is? Cashew! While the jar is drying, I went and dug through my fabric my scraps of fabric that is, and this is the only red that I could find, and guess what? It's not gonna do, I don't like the color. 
But guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna paint it. Why didn't I think of this earlier when I did the table? I don't know, because I just thought of it now. So we're gonna do it now. I've got about a four by four inch square here, and I'm just gonna lather on some of my paint. Look at that, I'm painting fabric. Who knew, you could paint fabric. Yep, it's gonna stiffen up a bit, but that's okay. We don't care if it's stiff, we just need the color. We need it rustic red. Not this bright red, but if you're doing bright red, then leave it. Now, because I didn't wanna do several coats of paint on this, I decided just to go in with some blue paint and trace out the word mason jar. If you wanna do several coats of paint, say start with the blue and then go over with the cashew and then sand it, you can. I just felt like this was quicker, easier, and I just wanted to do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, trace out the elevated letters that say, mason jar. Okay, I tried. I tried not to add stitching to this, but it just looked too plain. It was missing something. So I decided to go in and add some stitching to the top and the bottom of the jar in blue. And then I still felt like it was missing something. So I went back in with the red and did a red stripe below the blue. And now I'm happy with it. And you can see here that I went ahead and wrapped the cloth around the top attaching it with some twine and one of my twine bows and I did, of course, I can't help it, add stitching to the cloth itself. DIY 13 and this one is a repeat but with a twist. Yes, these frames, I love these. Why do I love these? Because it adds height to the tray and when you have height variations, it's more appealing to the eye and the piece itself. And so with this one, I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Antique Wax and give it a nice good coat. And to this, I wanted to add some stars cause this is the Americana theme I'm going with. So I've got four of my wood stars that came in, did I tell you? A 130 pack for like $3 at Michael's. It's worth it. You can get them on Amazon too, but why? Just go to Michael's, Creatology, get it, use a coupon. You're good to go. I'm gonna do two red and two of the, mm-hmm blue and these cute little stars are gonna go around the outside of this frame how fun is that oh shoot I didn't show you how I painted the stitching on haha <laughs> yep of course I added stitching to this all over the place I can't get enough of it have you heard that before I can't and again I will say this if stitching isn't for you then don't put it it is for me so I'm gonna put it on everything I can wherever I can and to this piece, we came up with a really cool embellishment that says, let freedom ring. How festive is that? Are we there yet? Nope, we're on DIY 14. I picked up another one of these garland pieces. At Easter time, it was a bunny. It's 4th of July, so guess what? It's a star. We're gonna throw away this garland because I'm not gonna lie to you, I despise it. I do not like glitter garland. It's horrible. What I love about these is the form that comes underneath them. And with this one, not only are you getting one star, but you're getting two for the price of one because this star mold comes apart. This is going to be a burlap star, but because you can usually see through burlap and I don't wanna see the mold, I dug into my felt scraps and I'm gonna sandwich this star in between two pieces of felt and just by placing some hot glue right along the outside of the star and pressing the felt together, you're gonna kinda mold the felt around the star. Once you get it all hot glued together, just go in and cut off that excess felt then you're gonna go ahead and sandwich it in between two pieces of burlap and look at that you can't see through it even the best burlap you can see through so i would definitely cover the mold first and again we're going to repeat the process by placing some hot glue along the outside edge of the felt not on the felt on the burlap on the outside of the felt and we're going to press it together molding it around the star so we can then go in with some scissors and cut away the excess burlap you all know how much I love burlap, but it's still a bit plain because look at what it's missing. Mm-hmm, some red stitching and some blue stitching. You can see on one of the tips of the stars, I cut the burlap too funky and messed it up, so I just went in and did a little bit of a patch job. It's not gonna show, because guess what's gonna go there? A twine bow, 
perfect thing to cover up my oops mistake. An oops mistake, there you go. Another word that goes in the Kelly Barlow Vocabulary Dictionary. Ha, word of the day, people. And with this, although I finished it off with a twine bow, I had some extra die cut embellishments from the handy die cut embellishment pack that was, did I tell you, designed just for this tier tray, I decided to add some of the wording to it. Let's take a quick look at some of the repeat DIYs in the spin that I put on them for this tray. We're gonna start off with one of my favorites to incorporate, and this is the books. And for this one, we put the Let Freedom Ring die cuts on it. And of course, I finished it off with a twine bow. Another one of my favorites is the birdhouse. Now, obviously, these are incorporated into this tray because they are my favorites, all of my favorites that I like to incorporate. And so if you have not seen me do these, you can take a look at the last two trays, the lemon tray and the Easter tray, and you will see exactly how I did them. I am also incorporating the beads because I love these beads. And of course, the Sunday. This Sunday is amazing. If again, you wanna see how I did this, I did this in the last two trays as well. We've got the piece. Piece, this is perfect for this tray. How could I pass this up at the Dollar Tree? I saw this and I said, it has to be put into this tray, doesn't it? Piece, 4th of July, Independence Day, yeah. My wood plaque sign using the four by four wood plaques that comes, I wanna say in a five pack, maybe an eight pack. Yep, my paper tag that I've painted with the Liberty die cut. These are so easy and they make such great additions to a tray, kind of space fillers. I wanted to get this tray up early so you all could pick up some of these items. Dollar Tree has this 4th of July pail that is just adorable. I replaced the ribbon that was around it with some twine. I added daisies because I love daisies and the pick at the top. And of course, I have plenty of Scrabble tiles left over and so I thought I'd put them together and put USA. How patriotic. I wanted to show you the alternative to a tiered tray that I just brought to you this last Wednesday in my Dollar Tree haul. This is gonna cost you $7 and it's a great space saver if you're looking for something just a bit smaller than the tiered tray itself. Well, look who we have here, Kayla Bame Creations, doing a voiceover on my latest farmhouse milk jug DIY. If you're in need of a good laugh, you wanna head on over to her channel and watch today's video. You can find the link to this video, guess where? in the description box below. Which DIY is my favorite on this tray? I don't know, but I can tell you that the colors I absolutely love, that burgundy rustic red and the rustic blue, and of course I had to go with cashew because I can't use white. Now remember that this is a versatile piece, so if the colors that I'm using are definitely not for you, you can very easily change them to suit the colors that you like. But you all know that I am a very rustic person and those bright reds and blues and whites just do not go with me. And so I had to mute them out and I love it because I feel like it really gives it that Americana feel that I love. I hope you all enjoyed today's 4th of July tier tray DIYs and this whole series that I'm bringing to you. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and you know what? Let's get this video to 6,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive and bye for now, everybody.